Welcome to Cardinal Newman High School, where we are about to bring you intersectional high school football. And this should be a great matchup between the St. Mary's Rams of Stockton and the Cardinal Newman Cardinals. The Cardinals take the field for the first time on the home turf this season, having played four road games. St. Mary's at 4-0, Cardinal Newman at 3-1. Hello, everyone. I'm Dave Cox, along with Michael Barabalt, and you've got to be excited about this matchup. St. Mary's has won four in a row, and they've won them rather easily. But Cardinal Newman has a little spring in their step tonight. They're coming off a big win, and the big news is Santino Azevedo has suited up after being injured in Game 2. And if he can provide any kind of impact, that's going to be such a big boost for this Cardinal Newman team. Playing against the St. Mary's team, ranked number 39 in the state of California from the SAC Joaquin Section Division 2 Cardinal Newman Division 4. This is going to be a pretty big test for them going into league play next week. No question about it. And Cardinal Newman coming off the De Anza win last week. Their offense kind of got it going a little bit last week behind quarterback Matt Hilden, but St. Mary's defense has been incredible this year. Yeah, Omari Gaze, the uh, the linebacker, junior linebacker, team leading, 26 tackles, 19 of them solo tackles. This guy flies around on the field on the defensive side of the ball. We're going to be looking for him all night long and looking forward to see if Cardinal Newman can kind of keep him out of their way. Looks like St. Mary's is going to kick off here tonight. Cardinal Newman sends return specialist Nicholas Ayer back to return tonight's opening kickoff. Beautiful night. It was rather warm here today, but has settled into a very nice night. Kicking off, Matthew Kane. Short kick. Jamari Gentry takes it. Spins away from one ram at the 30. And Jamari gets to the 34-yard line. Decent return, and Cardinal Newman's offense will take the field there. A little bit of a, bit of a short kick, but a nice shot by Gentry. Made some athletic moves to get something out of that. That looked like he was going to be stopped just a few yards after the catch, but was able to get a little bit more and give Cardinal Newman decent field position to start. So quarterback Matthew Hilden will take the field, coming off arguably his best game of the year last week against De Anza. And on the season, he's completed 49% of his passes, his quarterback rating at 97.7. Eight touchdowns for the big quarterback. He is 6'5", 270. So he is a big guy. Played on the line last year, but they moved him to QB. He actually played JV quarterback as a freshman. Got a penalty marker down. Screen to Zach Kelly, and he's got good yardage out to the 50. But our first marker of the night, and we're here from our referee, Ruben Candelaria. There is a play on the play. I'm not sure. It looks like they might be walking this one back. I wonder if there was an illegal formation because that flag came right up. It's illegal shift against the offense. Repeat, first down. And yeah, that's exactly what it was an illegal shift there for Newman. And you're already going backwards already on the first play of the game. Not a good start for Newman. No, already they back him up five yards, so that's not good. Start to say, beautiful night here at Ed Lloyd Field. Cardinal Newman again at that 3-1 and one record. They lost to Vacaville on the road. Handoff goes to Kaize Steverson. Acevedo not in the backfield. Steverson has filled in really nicely on both sides of the ball, particularly at running back. Azevedo was hurt in that Vacaville loss early in the game, and boy, did they miss him. Best defensive player by far, their biggest offensive threat. And Steverson coming in, 303 yards rushing, five touchdowns. And But it's all going to start up front with that Cardinal Newman offensive line. When they go, this offense goes. Hilden looking over that Rams defense. St. Mary's in their white with green and their Ram helmets. Cardinal Newman in the Cardinal and gold. Hilden will throw this one out to the near side, and it is caught. Nice catch by Will Deal, and he gets good yardage. That's going to be a first down for Newman. Yeah, just a simple out route right there to hit Deal. In fact, that Sam, St. Mary's defensive line got some pressure, and Deal was wide open for getting pushed out of bounds. Super important for Newman to get off to a good start here, and already going with the hard count. Nearly got St. Mary's to jump. We saw that in our game last week. Team struggling with that hard count. Here comes Steverson again. 
And Steverson gets three to the 47-yard line. So it'll be interesting to see. They have a bye week next week. And then they play Montgomery in the first league game. Will they take a chance on Santino getting re-injured? Not sure. Maybe they just had him out there just to maybe play a little psych with St. Yeah. Mary's. But we'll see. If they use him, it'll probably be on defense. Yeah, and it's probably going to be in a sparingly roll. A couple plays here and there, or unless injury occurs. Yeah, I think it's just a deke move by Cardinal Newman. Comes Steverson again, runs right into a brick wall at the 46, got a yard, and that is all. And a real nice job there by Lucas Healy, the senior linebacker, filling that gap. And he met him right around the line of scrimmage. Healy, another one of their St. Mary's leaders. defense, as advertised, doing a nice job. And Healy, 17 tackles. On the that's second on the team behind Gales. Same as shown blitz here. Third down. Hilden has plenty of time. Now he loses it, but he rolls out, gets away from a couple guys. Hilden is a big guy and he can rumble. Hilden all the way down to the 42 and might be in a situation where they go for it here on fourth down. And it looks like that's exactly what they're going to do. Coach Richard Sanchez giving the play. See Hilden right here. This guy wasn't a lineman, as you said, last year, but could be playing tight end, could be playing linebacker. He is hard to get down. You see right there three or four guys needing to bring him down. If he's able to get loose at all, look out St. Mary's. Gabriel Valeros was in on the tackle for St. Mary's. Fourth and a couple, a little more than two. I would say about two and a half. Power play, Steverson. Has the first down with a spin down to the 36-yard line. Great run for Kaize Steverson. And a nice job by that offensive line, letting that first line of defense through, kind of almost like a draw play in that sense from the line. And that allowed Steverson some room to get through that gap. Steverson having a good year. As I mentioned, five touchdowns, 303 yards coming into this one, and we've got a marker down. Dead ball foul, encroachment against the defense, five-yard penalty, repeat the down. They're going to get Danielson for that. Yeah, five more. So that'll take the ball down to the 31-yard line. First in. Five, Newman running a lot of these opening plays in a bunch set. First and five. Kaize Steverson, left side. He's got a first down, and he's down to the 24-yard line. Nice run to the outside. Steverson making things happen on this opening drive. That's the Newman offensive line getting off to a good start, getting that push up front. Sam Aries showing blitz on almost every play, but not always sending someone sending one or none haven't brought the house yet st mary's defense saying who are these guys man driving it right down the field on a slow grinding kind of uh making an early statement here are the cardinals that they came to play tonight on their home turf for the first time this year and against one of the top ranked teams in the state and, and we get a timeout SoCo Property proudly supports Cardinal Newman. Caroline Fuller, the founder broker, has been enthusiastically serving Sonoma County's real estate needs and exceeding expectations for the past 18 years. A true local, Caroline grew up in Santa Rosa's Bennett Valley and now has an office in Annadale Shopping Center Business Park. Designed to sell is her specialty. Her team takes pride in preparing tired homes and revamping them from top to bottom to be the best homes on the block that sell for top dollar. SoCo Property has grown organically thanks to their passion for sharing all Sonoma County has to offer. First and 10, Newman 
Another running play. Steverson tripped up in the backfield. Nice defensive play, diving in. Manalai Danielson, great defensive player for the St. Mary's team. And he came in from the back side that time. Something, someone missed their assignment on that left side of the line, and that allowed Danielson to shoot that gap and make the play in the backfield. Here's Steverson, left side, has some blocking, and Steverson gets into the red zone. He's to the 18-yard line. And it's nice just, run for Kaize Steverson. And again, it's that offensive line getting that push on the right side, more specifically, that right guard and tackle. See, so Azevedo picks up the lost yardage on first down, and a lot more than that, third and about four for Newman. All right, check it. Zach Homan now in the backfield. Homan hitting the backfield. He's in trouble. And he goes down for a loss. That's a sack. And that's Danielson again making the play as well as Quinton Rance teaming up to make that play as you see that run again. That's set up Newman for a third and fourth. And now fourth down. Looks like they're going to try a long field goal. Coming in to kick. Patrick Gardner, the sophomore. This is going to be about a 40-yarder out of the hold of Zach Kelly. That is no joke. Gardner lines it up. Newman trying to take the lead. He's got the distance but he pushes it to the right, no good. Good effort, pushed it just a little bit to the right and a great drive, ends with no points and now St. Mary's will take the field. And that's a great job by the St. Mary's defense holding serve after it looked like Cardinal Newman was marching down the field and then we saw them kind of wake up a little bit and stop Cardinal Newman cold and now St. Mary's will have to go 80 yards on their first drive. First and 10, the quarterback for St. Mary's is Samson Hunkin. They'll hand off on first down to the near side. Decent yardage. That handoff goes to Asante Carter. A nice job by the left tackle there, Thomas Serrano for St. Mary's. You see him right there. Holding serve, holding long enough. See, Hunkin has completed 74% of his passes for six touchdowns this year. Having a great season for the St. Mary's team, and his quarterback ranking is really high. There's a completion. Far side, first down yardage to the 35 as he finds Brooks Wheatley. Jack Graff making the tackle that time. It's a nice little quick pass out to the right side. Yeah, just, a, just a simple screen pass that time. And using the athleticism of Wheatley, who has probably one of the, who is one of the most athletic players on the field this evening. A little trouble in the backfield. Here comes Newman, and they take him down. First guy on the scene is Jasper Kemp. Hand up to Danielson. He's down the backfield. Back by Kemp as... Check that out. And both defenses now making some big plays. And again, Kemp does a nice job of getting him in the backfield. They lost about five or six there. So second and a bunch now for St. Mary's. Hunkins straight back to pass. Slight low screen out there to Asante Carter. Carter gets around Steverson and he gets out to the 43 yard line. Decent yardage. Carter gets that ball down to the 45 yard line. 
I think they go back to Carter there. Carter now in the backfield. Third and short here. Kind of in that pistol formation is Hunkin. Sante Carter, and Carter has a first down to the 49-yard line. And they like going to that short side of the field. And Carter, another one great athletes on the field for St. Mary's. You see him right there. Carter's just a junior, 5'11", 170 pounds. Hunkin trying to buy some time, being flushed. He's got good yardage now, and he'll get a first down as he steps out in front of Kaize Steverson at the 39-yard line. Good decision by the junior quarterback as now St. Mary's returns the favor and drives it down the field. And Hunkin just so athletic, able to move in and out of the pocket, found some room, and made the smart decision to just go right out of bounds and take the yardage. And off straight ahead, look out, Carter through the middle, and he is down at the one yard line, caught from behind by Gen Mari Gentry, but a huge run and a first down. Man, they're gonna hurry this up, they're gonna try and catch Cardinal Newman napping here. So take a look at the replay. Gentry just did get him from behind. Coming up to the line quickly, jumbo package. Sante Carter behind some big blocking, and he's in easily for the touchdown. Sante Carter with the first score of the game. And that was due to the offensive line. Larry Bragg, Caleb the third on the left side, and Andrew Gonzalez making that happen, pushing the pile and wow. creating that huge hole. Carter could just walk in. Ginormous hole. Extra point kick is up and good by Matthew Kane. And St. Mary's on their first possession of the night takes the lead. So a nice drive for the Rams as they rip down the field. And we'll step aside real quickly here. Nice start for both teams, but it's the Rams who score first. We'll be back with more in just a moment. High school sports are one of the things that make living in California so great. But sometimes the behavior in the stands can overshadow our achievements on the field. I love it when my parents show up for me. But being booed for missing a play could be crushing. And remember that refs are people too. They're trying their best to call a fair and correct game. Hey, and enough with all the f swearing. No one should feel insulted or ashamed because of their race, ethnicity, or gender. We should be able to hold our heads high after the match, win or lose. St. Mary's to kick it off. Kane will do the honors. It's going to go deep. And that one's out of the back of the end zone. Nice weapon when you have a kicker who can do that. Yeah, he's got a nice leg, that's for sure. Matthew Kane, the junior. This man has to be on the kickoff team. It's the play that set up that touchdown. And nice job catching him from behind by Jamari Gentry. But Sante Carter had a big drive. And you saw him go right there. He's like one yard short, and he's like, ah. Oh. But he walked in on the next play. Now Cardinal Newman, offensive line, you see right there. Had a good start to the drive, but then we're stuffed by the great St. Mary's defense. See if they can put something together for 80 yards this time around. So Matthew Hilden, after engineering a nice drive, and they ended up stalling, having to try to kick a field goal. St. Mary's goes down the field and scores rather quickly, mostly on the ground, a few short pass plays. Hilden looking for somebody to handoff. I think they were trying to reverse right there, and nobody came for the handoff, so it's a loss. Hilden caught in the backfield. And a great first step there by Danielson on the line on that left end. Amir Matthews was also in on the tackle, but Danielson has been very active so far. Quentin Lamp. 
And that's St. Mary's defensive line just too quick for Newman right now. And St. Mary's showing five or six guys every time. They, you see it again right there. Showing five, now six creeping up. Handoff. Steverson, not much there. Coming up from the bottom of the pile once again, Manale Danielson. He's got a bunch of D1 offers. Great player. Danielson there to make that tackle. No real game on the play. That's he is the guy now. that they really rely on on the defense. He's only a sophomore, too. How do you like that? Wow. Now St. Mary's up 7-0 here in the first quarter. Newman spreading it out for the first time tonight. Hilden gets away, now fires it, and he almost got air. He was a little off balance when he threw it, and air couldn't come back to the ball. Fourth down, Newman's going to have to punt it away. And an excellent stop by St. Mary's there, forcing a three and out right after scoring. See if they can keep their momentum going. Oh my goodness. Snap goes over his head, and that's going to be a safety. Good here. Cut in the end zone as that snap gets away. Wow, that was not and be ideal at all. And the exact opposite of what you want Four there, and that's the Mary's. fear when you're punting from inside your 20. See, he just tried to cover it up, but it's about all he could really do there. And rather just fall in it and give up the two than give up six there. Now 9-0. Tonight's game is sponsored by Anchor 21. We are your one-stop shop for all your promotional branding needs. Anchor 21 Promotional Branding. Thank you for your support. CardinalNewmanCardinals.com. Tonight's game is also sponsored by NBE North Bay Elite. North Bay Elite is the North Bay's premier girls basketball club, the longest running club in Sonoma County. Players going on to compete at the Division One, Two, Three, and NAIA levels. North Bay Elite. So Patrick Gardner will kick it off. Decent kick, but St. Mary's is going to get good field position as Kenneth Moore the third takes it. And look out, Kenneth Moore the third at midfield. And he gets into Cardinal Newman territory. Finally brought down by Samuel Elliott and the kicker, Patrick Gardner. If you're Cardinal Newman, this is dig deep time now. You just gave up a touchdown, then you go three and out on your next possession. Give up a safety, and now you give up good field position for St. Mary's, although it might be coming back. On the return, number seven, White, with a hold. It'll be first down for St. Mary's. All right, Ruben Candelario is going to back them up. Spot of the foul was way back at about the 38, so this is going to cost them big yardage. And Newman gets a huge break right there. That ends up being about a 30-yard penalty, and they bring it back to the spot of the foul. 
Uh, Newman's got to dig deep here. Can't let this game get away from you here in the first quarter. Got to come up with a big defensive stop here. Bad snap there. Not much doing there. That's going to be a loss for St. Mary's back at the 24-yard line. Newman's defense makes a play. Yeah, and Hunkin had to catch that snap off the ground, and it's kind of a, a, a tight handoff to Carter, and it had nothing going. Under a minute to go here, first quarter, second and about 13 yards. Last year oh. in the game at St. Mary's as we see penalty markers hit the field. Dead ball foul. False start against the offense. Repeat second down. And they're going to get Kenneth Moore the third there. Just a slight flinch on the far side of the field, and that side judge caught it. Instantly, and now St. Mary's shooting themselves in the foot. Two penalties already. Hunkin to throw. He's got a man complete to Caden Ward. And Ward gets to the 32-yard line, so it's going to be, or to the 30, it's going to be third and about eight. And Newman back in coverage there. Not in a man coverage. That gave Moore plenty of room. And check that, Caden Ward, plenty of room to run. And now third and about eight. Let's see if Newman switches it up here as we head to the second quarter. So that's going to do it for the first quarter of play. End of one, 9-0, St. Mary's with the lead. We'll take a break right here and be back with more action in just a moment here on YSN365.com and CardinalNewmanCardinals.com. Santa Rosa Golf and Country Club is Sonoma County's premier private country club with something for everyone in the family. Of course, the incredible 18-hole golf course, including the exclusive 100-yard practice hole and driving range. The perfect dining experience from a casual lunch to an elegant formal dinner. And the amazing event venue you will love. Santa Rosa Golf and Country Club can accommodate weddings and private events for up to 300 guests. And there is so much more to offer. Come see for yourself the Santa Rosa Golf and Country Long pass down the field, complete to 14 as we start the second quarter. That was Caden Ward. Ward with a nice first down. St. Mary's with a big play. By that was Hunter Ward. Nicholas Ayer brought him down. That's a first down for the Rams. And that was Humpkin and Ward using their athleticism. Kind of a broken play. And Ward able to get open. Here comes Asante Carter. He has nice yardage down inside the 30-yard line. Newman has the bye week next week. Then they play Montgomery here at home in the first NBL Oak exactly. contest of the year. You drop him. I'm excited to see. I'm going to see Montgomery tomorrow playing the defending Redwood Division champion, St. Vincent. That'll be interesting. After and we had Montgomery last week against Costa Grande, good football game. So, yeah, those teams were the coat champions of that league last year. Here comes Hunkin carrying himself. He's a good runner as well, and he gets a first down. Knocked out by Jamari Gentry, but he's got first down yardage. Gentry slow to get up, or who is that? Cardinal Newman player is injured. Yeah, far side of the field. It's not Gentry, he popped up. <laughs> St. Mary's again going to that short side of the field, running the ball with Carter. Just using his athleticism, Might bouncing off Myers. defenders. That would be devastating. Nope, it's Santiago at dawn. 
guy who's yeah. very important on both sides of the ball, the tight end on offense. He's un under his own power. That's the good news. And he'll be coming off the field. Training staff here at Newman does a great job. That could be a huge blow to Newman as he comes off the field. Clock now moving again. 11 minutes to go, second quarter. Newman trying to keep St. Mary's from scoring here on their second possession. Low snap, Hunkin handles it well, gives it to Carter. Carter bounces to the outside, and Newman rallies to the ball. Zach Kelly making the tackle and doing a nice job on defense that time. And again, going to that short side of the field. I had a couple of receivers bunched up there near the 23-yard line. Get that ball down to 24. Tom Newman, if this pattern keeps up, you want to start overloading that side of the field. And but you may take that risk in that one-on-one -on -one matchup as you see head coach Tony Franks there for St. Mary's. Tony Franks has been here a long time, done a nice job with the St. Mary's program. Of course, Richard Sanchez with Newman in his second year after leading them to the NCS championship last year. Hunkin going to keep. Kaize Steverson comes up and knocks him down at about the 10, but that's going to be a first down as he continues to do a nice job moving the ball down the field with his legs and his arm. Again, Humpkin just using his athleticism there. Can almost use him as a running back as well. And that's the smart decision trying to slide down safely. But that is such a weapon to have an athlete behind center that's able to make something out of nothing. First and ten. They can't get a first down. There is a penalty marker. Dead ball foul. False start against the offense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat first down. For St. Mary's, now that's got to be five or six penalties early on in this game. No doubt. Have a chance to really break this game open early. And have shot themselves in the foot, giving Newman a chance here. Only going with three down linemen, expecting the pass with four wide look. Hunkin with some pressure, gets rid of it nicely to Ward, who's now caught three balls, and he's back near the original line of scrimmage. They've been going to Ward a lot. I see plenty of time for Humpkin, and looks like it was just a little simple little slant route for Ward. And playing a cover defense is Newman, so he's got plenty of room. Three receptions and 50 yards for Ward here early on. And that bunched up look on the far side. I wonder if they give to Carter. Penalty marker goes down. It's going to go against Newman. Dead ball foul. Encroachment against the defense. Five yard penalty. Second down. Ruben's been busy. <laughs> Second and five. A little motion here as they go with double tight ends. Sante Carter in the middle, and Newman blows the play up. Nice job by the Newman defense. Leading the way right there was Zach Rea. He had a big game last week against De Anza. Makes a big play right here. And on that play specifically, the splits on the right side of the offensive line were much tighter than on the left side. And they went to that left side, the short side of the field. And again, a little bit tight on the right side, but the left side, you see that left tackle, that's got to be about, or that left guard, rather about a four-foot split. Hunked in to throw, one-on-one -on -one coverage. Ward comes back to the ball. He's got it. Touchdown. Touchdown. Penalty marker may be down, though. Hang on. Yeah, I wonder if they're going to call pass interference there. There's a little bit of a shove. Might have pushed off. May, or maybe 
some sort of holding. I don't know. We'll see here. Yeah, it looks like they're going to. I don't think they're going to get the points. It. Yeah. Unless they called it on Newman. Yeah, I'm not sure. Well, Hunkins back out, so. Because the flag was thrown right at the goal line by the side judge on the far side. So you wonder if they're going to take the touchdown if it is against Newman and go for two. And try and make the 17 nothing. Reuben with a pretty long explanation here. Unless it's going to go against St. Mary's. There's Coach Sanchez on the other side. He'll listen in closely to this one. We had a hold. A lot of scoring play. We had a hold on the defense. We're going to count the touchdown, penalize it on the kickoff. We have an extra point right now. Okay, well, there you have it. Looks like they're going to go for two. And they're in that bunch jumbo formation. Same play. A lot of confidence. Here comes Carter, and he gets the two easily. So they'll tack on some points. It was that same exact play they ran on the, the touchdown earlier. And a nice job by that right guard for St. Mary's. Larry Bragg, Caleb the third, And just pinning down his defender. Tonight's game is sponsored by Corrective Exercise and Restoration. The training staff here at Cardinal Newman with a holistic approach toward health care. They do team training, also individual. Get your athlete back on the field as quickly as possible with Corrective Exercise and Restoration. It's two locations to serve you in Sebastopol and Santa Rosa. Cardinal Newman would like to encourage students who are looking to come here in the coming years to apply now. Cardinal Newman is accepting applications for next year's freshman class. If you have an eighth grader interested in Cardinal Newman, visit our website and start the application process. There are several steps, so start now and get your application in order before the wait list starts. Go to cardinalnewman.org slash apply now. cardinalnewman.org slash apply now. Complete the form, follow the steps, and we welcome you to campus next year. Nicholas Ayer back to receive the kick. Hasn't been able to get a touch yet. This time he may. Low kick, but it squirts right by him and into the end zone. So Newman will have to start that ball goes into the end at the 25-yard line. And they kicked off from the 50 that time. That was the penalty charge yeah, right. from the kickoff. 20-yard line, excuse me. They'll have to start. So 17-0 now, St. Mary's. So that kind of gets them back on the number. They had an odd number because of the safety. So it's one of those. I think coaches usually carry a card when you go for two and when you don't. Right. New quarterback. Kaisei Steverson spins and gets about a yard. Well, See the training staff right there working on Steverson. Santiago Adon. Seems like they're trying to get him back in the game is what I would how I would assess that. Yeah, wrapping up that knee. For sure. They went wildcat on that play with Steverson. Hilda wasn't even on the field. That was interesting. Now returns back. Gain of a couple. And again, it's the St. Mary's defensive line that has been so good so far. Led by Quentin Ranty and Milani Danielson and Gabriel Valeros, number 99, the nose tackle. Matthew Hilden, second and eight. Severson did gain a couple on that last play. Hilden oh, with immediate trouble. And he is going to go down for a loss way back at the 14-yard line, the blocking. Just completely broke down, and the rush was on that time. And Lucas Healy was not even touched. He went right through the middle of that offensive line. C-51 right there. Got to Hilden. 
and had no play. Hilden's only had maybe a second and a half or two seconds to even look for a receiver. He's been pressured every single play. And St. Mary is showing that pressure. They're not always sending everybody, but they're at least showing it and making Hilden think about it. You see it again. Three down linemen third, showing three more. Third and 14 now. Steverson, the lone back, two to the near side, two to the far side for the Cardinals. Offensive line has got to give him time. They do here. Throws it up for Zach Kelly, who comes back to the ball, but can't hang on. Almost. Zach Kelly had a really nice shot at that. That's a nice job by Joshua Watkins on the coverage there. See, Kelly will come right into the picture here. Just the pass. So close to hanging on to that. He turned and Watkins turned around just in time, got that left hand out there and knocked the ball away. Dropping back is Brooks Wheatley. Steve Newman can get it off this time. Another oh, nope, they're oh. in trouble again. It's going to be another safety. Oh, my gosh. What is going on with the snap on punts? My goodness. Yeah, and it's inside your own 20. It's not the easiest thing to do. Now we've seen it twice, and yeah, this, the first one was a low snap. This one a high snap, and there's no coverage, and Amari Gales, the leading tackler, makes that play, and Gets St. Mary's two more points. Wow. So that was an unfortunate turn of events. Cardinal Newman, they're going to have to fix that for sure. SoCo Property proudly supports Cardinal Newman. Caroline Fuller, the founder, broker, has been enthusiastically serving Sonoma County's real estate needs and exceeding expectations for the past 18 years. A true local, Caroline grew up in Santa Rosa's Bennett Valley and now has an office in the Annadale Shopping Center Business Park. Designed to sell is her specialty. Her team takes pride in preparing tired homes and revamping them from top to bottom to be the best homes on the block that sell for top dollar. No project is too big or small for this dynamic team. SoCo Property. Now, St. Mary's is going to have good field position again because Newman kicking off from their own 20. Yep. Patrick Gardner will try to send this one deeper. 5.51 left now, 19-0. Last year at St. Mary's, St. Mary's got off to an awesome start. Had a big play to start the game and an onside kick. Scored two quick touchdowns before Newman was even settled in. Big return this time by Brooks Wheatley. Wheatley down inside the 10 might have stepped out. I want to say it looks like 20 is where he stepped out. Yeah, side judge making the call. Wheatley, one of, if not the fastest player on the field and showed it there. And the St. Mary's team is filled with phenomenal athletes. And they're putting it on full display here so far tonight. St. Mary's crowd, pretty glad they made the trip so far. So great field position again after the two-point safety. Now they are set up almost in the red zone for another drive. Cardinal Lemons defense is going to have to dig deep here. Humpkin throws it up high, and it's incomplete. And yeah, Newman, you got to stop the bleeding right here. All the momentum on the St. Mary's side. You got to stop right here. Hold them to three points or no points. Give yourselves a chance to score before the end of the half. Here comes Asante Carter, left side. And Carter picks up decent yardage. You see Coach Sanchez on the sideline trying to find an answer, a way to stop this team. 
Yeah, again, going to that short side of the field where they've really dominated. Again, now the splits on that right side of the offensive line have widened out a little bit to match the left side, but it seems like they're tighter in between the guard and tackle on both sides and wider between the guards. Third down, Carter bumps into his own man and look out. He goes down. Nice job on defense for Newman that time. And they're going to send out the kicking unit, St. Mary's. First guy on the scene was James McKenzie. Also in on the play that time was Kenyon Strain. There's Kenyon. And it looks like St. Mary's going to try a field goal. St. Mary's sends out the field goal unit. Matthew Kane, the junior, will try and add three. Holder is Brooks Wheatley. Kick is up. And it's no good. He's missed it. So Newman holds. And Nicholas Ayer very nearly got away with roughing the kicker there. Got the safe call from Ruben Candelaria. But a big stop by Newman. And they'll have about four and a half minutes to get something on the board. Beautiful night here in Sonoma County. We welcome St. Mary's and their fans all the way from Stockton. As we see some scores, some other scores. Carrillo up 12-6 over Santa Rosa in the second quarter. Petaluma up 7-6 over Justin Siena. And Vintage leads Casa Grande 20-3. American Canyon 14-0 over Sonoma Valley. All those games still in the first half. First and 10 Newman from the 20 after the missed field goal. Hilden looking deep. He's got a man. And it's complete. Zach Kelly. Nice play, Zach Kelly. Good throw that time by Hilden right on the money. And that was just a one-on-one -on -one matchup. And Kelly with a nice outside step beat his defender. And Hilden led him there and a nice diving catch. First big play of the night for Newman. Let's see if they can build some momentum here. Kelly comes off the field. There it is. Hand off. Decent yardage for Kaize. Hand off to Thurston. Kelly tackled. So Newman gets something going. By Gales, as well as Hart. They're in on the tackle for St. Mary's. Gave him about. Got a little excited. We saw Santino Acevedo warming up in uniform, but he hasn't been on the field so far. And with the score as it is, I doubt we'll see him now. Get that bye week, maybe get him back for the Montgomery game, although I already be out a little bit longer than that. Second down and three now for Cardinal Newman. Matthew Hilden's throw is high and incomplete. And again, got pressured that time from the outside on the right side of the field. Let's go back to that earlier play to Zach Kelly. It's also one, nice of, the catch. Few, it's also one of the few times Hilden's had time to throw. The offensive line did a good job of holding that St. Mary's defense back for a few seconds and it gave Kelly enough time to beat his defender by a step or two. Yeah, good point. And Hilden has been sacked four times already in this game. So that's been the issue. For sure, third down and about three for Newman. They're in St. Mary's territory. Their opening drive was a good one. Just couldn't connect on the 40-yard field goal, and Steverson is dropped for a loss back near the 49. Nice penetration that time by Quentin Rent. Gets that ball down the 49-yard line. Looks like this is four down territory for Newman. Yeah, he might as well go for it here. Four four. Play coming into Hilden. We have you straight there right now, Paul. We have you straight to your off. Strain checks in. We're going to have to hustle. This is taking them quite a bit of time. They have timeouts and might have to use one here. I'm not sure how much time is left on the play clock. Fourth 
and five from the 49-yard line of St. Mary's. And the back judge has started his count. Yep. And they didn't make it. Knew that was going to be a problem. Timeout. Oh, oh, looks like Newman, wow. Newman squeezed a timeout in before that. Good job, Newman. I was going to say, that would have been a huge blunder if they gave up the five yards there and probably would have taken the ability to go for it out of your hands. And I wonder if you're Newman, if you send an extra down lineman out there to try and give Hilden some pressure. Tonight's game is sponsored by Anchor 21 Promotional Branding. We are your one-stop shop for all your promotional branding needs. Anchor 21 Promotional Branding. You can go to their website at anchor21branding.com. I should say give Hilden some protection, not pressure. And see what Coach Sanchez draws up here. Newman 3-1 and one on the year. First home game, too. All four games on the road. Playing from the home fans for the first time. It's going to be one of the most quirkiest schedules I've, uh, I've ever seen. Four games on the road to start the season. Now you got probably five of the last six at home. Still fourth and five after the timeout. Yeah, I think their only road game in league play is against Annalee. Hilden trying to buy some time. Gets it to Steverson. He's going to be close. I think he got the first down. Steverson to the 40-yard line does a nice job staying in bounds. And Newman will indeed move the chains. Nice play. And that might be Newman's best bet if they want to throw the ball, just these quick passes. Because we know Hilden hasn't gotten a whole lot of time. He can hit. kind of tippy toe here. Yeah, he can hit Steverson on the outside and let him go to work. Big first down for Newman. First and 10, Newman, they've got under two minutes to work with, but still two timeouts. Hilden to throw, and I believe it's caught for wow. a couple yards. Go back to that previous play. Nice fourth down call right here, just this little swing pass. Steverson made the first Ooh. guy miss. That was the key. And he was inches from stepping out of bounds there. Really close call, but it looked like he did stay in bounds. As you Jonah saw, Bertoli made that last catch, second and six. As you saw in that previous play, another quick pass is more laundry on the field. Oh, my goodness. Penalty markers. Dead ball foul. Encroachment against the defense. Second down. Encroachment call moves them a little closer. <coughs> Second and one now for Newman. Four wide. Hilden rolls left. Throws it late, and it's caught. Nice catch in traffic by William Deal. And Newman has another first down. And a nice job by Deal to shake off his defender and get a couple more yards after the catch. It almost looked like a horse collar in the moment. Got it to him somehow in traffic. Man. Nice play. Ended up getting three or four yards after the catch there as Newman takes his second timeout. Interesting time, though, for a timeout. With a first down, that stops the clock. Please. Reset the clock for 115, 115. Today's game is sponsored by NBE North Bay Elite, Sonoma County's premier girls basketball club, the longest running club in Sonoma County. Players going on to compete at the Division 1, 2, 3, and NAI levels, and a bunch of them. North Bay Elite. We got Newman inside the 30 here, about the 29-yard line. Interested to see what the play call is. Again, looking for points on the board and certainly 
Seven points is going to look a lot better than three here. They already tried for that 40-yard field goal in the first quarter and just missed it. Got to be shooting for seven here. Minute 15 to work with. Hilden has time in the pocket. Lofts it up to Zach Kelly. Kelly's got it. Touchdown, Newman. What a throw. Right on the money to Zach Kelly. And the Cardinals are on the board. And again, Kelly beating his man, Jordan Charlotte. Gets a step. Hilden, does he have time to throw? And delivers a dot to Kelly. What a great throw. And Newman on the board. Second reception of the night for Kelly. And Newman's going to take another timeout. Nice, nice little pump fake here. Look at yeah. that. Just that little shoulder got the defense to bite. And then Kelly catches it in stride. Perfect throw. Nice touch that time by Hilden to just kind of lob that one in there. And we've seen two of those plays specifically when he's had time to throw. Deliver great passes to Zach Kelly. He's obviously the one they want to get the ball to. And two pretty big plays there. And they're on the board with six, and now Newman calls a timeout here. Are they debating on going for two or perhaps even a fake extra point? I can't imagine it. Down 19-6. to six. But you wonder if Coach Sanchez is going to get creative. On the season coming into this one, Kelly had eight catches and four touchdowns. He's added to that with two receptions, 55 yards, and a touchdown. Coach Sanchez gets a drink of water, says that is more like it. Let's get back in this ball game. <laughs> Patrick Gardner, extra points become important because of the safeties now. St. Mary's is on an odd number of 19. Oh. And this kick is blocked. Boy, Newman has had just nothing but trouble with special teams so far here tonight. Two punts that led to two safeties, a missed field goal. And now that blocked kick right there. Cardinal Newman High School would like to remind you to be here for the Student Preview Day. Cardinal Newman is hosting its annual Student Preview Day on Monday, October 24th. Eighth graders can spend the day at Cardinal Newman with student ambassadors to see what it's like to be a Cardinal Newman student. Space is limited, so register today. Go to cardinalnewman.org slash apply now. cardinalnewman.org slash Apply now. Follow the steps to register for preview day. Well, Cardinal Lumen's got to feel a little better about things after that drive, but they left a minute and eight seconds on the clock, Michael, and uh, when you're playing St. Mary's, that could be trouble. Well, and with the playmakers they have and that we've seen, like Asante Carter and Caden Ward specifically, and that man Brooks Wheely, who nearly took the last kickoff back for a touchdown, one of the fastest players on the field. I wonder if they maybe squib kick this a little bit. They're going to kick it deep. Risky, but here we go. Nice hole for Kenneth Moore the third, but they get him at the 38-yard line. And Moore ran into one of his own teammates there. That's what slowed him down initially. Now nine seconds to go. And St. Mary's does have a very good kicker, so you're looking at a shorter field. Got the ball at about the 37. Can probably get it to about the 25 or 30. Could be in field goal range. Penalty marker down. Dead ball foul. Ball start against the offense. First down. It's a five-yard so backs up St. Mary's, 56 seconds to work with. And I would say realistically they would try to get inside the 25, close to the 20 as possible probably for Matthew Kane, their kicker. Hunkin looking over the defense. Their backup quarterback is a freshman. He's played a lot because their games have been blowouts. Fires it in traffic, breaking tackles. Nasiri Danielson, and he gets out to the 45-yard line. Stays in bounds. Clock will still run. Right away there, make that tackle. Second and three for St. Mary's. 
Second and a couple. Play action. Hunkin looking for help. Good coverage by Newman. And Hunkin steps out of bounds at the 49. He'll have a first down. And for St. Mary's, you're going to need a couple of big plays. Get yourself in field goal range. They do have two timeouts left. So a little bit of extra room to play with. Timer, please put 25 seconds on the game clock. Oh. Danger zone tonight. It's a blackout. Hunkin in trouble. And the ball's loose. St. Mary's got it. Boy, but Newman almost recovered that. That was close. Great pressure that time put on by Newman, Zach Rea. And they finally got to Humpkin for the first time. Knocked the ball loose, but St. Mary's hopped on it, and they're just going to let the clock run out here in the first half. And that takes us to halftime. So Newman with a little momentum to close out the half. Here Interesting ball game so far. Newman heading to the locker room, trailing 19-6. So really only down by two scores. We'll take a break right here. It'll be the Community First Credit Union halftime show. Coming up here, we'll have some highlights of the first half of play and the team totals. Coming up next. Jimmy Kimmel has a long running gag. It's where celebrities read mean tweets about themselves. Well, Committee First, we get tweets, but they're not mean, they're sweet tweets. Now, authentic tweets read by their authentic recipients. After coming from a big bank that got bought by a bigger bank and added more fees, I moved my business and personal accounts to Community First. Crystal Alvarez made the transition smooth with her professionalism, kindness, and smiles. I spoke to another lender before speaking with Sue Black. The first lender made me feel like I was wasting his time when I asked questions. Sue, on the other hand, was always available to answer my questions and always in such a friendly manner. Buying a house was a big step in my life, and I'm very thankful I had an amazing person guide me through it. I had been thinking of refinancing my vehicles for a while. A friend told me to get in contact with Rita Sanchez, which I did. Let me tell you how fast and helpful she was. She refinanced both my cars and lowered my payments tremendously. I am more than happy with the outcome. I will never be able to fully express my appreciation for Dawn and how she helped my family secure the funds to build our new home. Dawn is a standout in her field, and after one conversation with her, you'll know why. There are not enough stars for me to adequately review the incredible experience I just had with Michelle Phillips. I am in absolute awe at her knowledge, her patience, her professionalism, her immediate help, and her incredible personality. On a scale of 1 to 10, Sarah Inzano is an 11. It's always a pleasure to work with go-getters who autograph their work with excellence. Rockstar Rich. That's me. Both my hubby and I are self-employed and we felt nothing but support and trust from Rich. Bang. Devin was personable, with a good sense of humor and very professional. He treated me like I was his very best customer. I imagine he treats everyone that way. Best service I've had in a long time anywhere. While the credit union is great, what really is great is Colleen Redler, who is the shining light that helps keep us coming back. She remembers all of our names and greets us with a smile every time we walk in. I hope Community First realizes what an asset they have in her with her vast experience and stellar member service. She's a gem. I absolutely love this credit union. 
They are always there to greet you with a smile and are very knowledgeable and helpful. What I like the most is the personal care they provide. Priceless. Jill, Miriam, Janine, I love the ladies in Napa. If you haven't given them a try, what are you waiting for? Wow, those are some really sweet tweets. And thank you members for writing those. And for our employees, you earned them all. Hey, until next time everyone, see ya. what you do. Your actions affect those around you and your community. It matters who you buy from, where you bank, your footprint on the environment. Since 1959, there has been a local financial cooperative that is distinctively different from a bank. Its charter requires it to do good, good for its members, their kids, and the communities where they live. That cooperative is Community First Credit Union. Anyone in the counties of Sonoma, Napa, Mendocino, Marin, or Lake can join. By banking with a credit union instead of a bank, not only do you get better rates, lower and fewer fees, but your locally earned dollars stay local. With Community First, you help people, businesses, and the schools where you live. Community First is also a leader in tech conveniences. The first with contactless debit cards, perfect in this pandemic era. We were the first locally based bank or credit union with an app to make deposits via your smartphone. And the first with 24-7 virtual banker, powered by artificial intelligence. I want a bank where I get more. I want a bank where my community gets more. I want a bank where 80% of management are women. I want a bank where I can get the most free ATMs nationally. We want a bank that teaches us money. About money. Bank, where it matters to you, personally, ethically, locally. Community first started by local teachers in 1959, is here for good. Welcome back here at the half. Well done, well done. Pretty interesting first half of play, Michael. Let's take a look at some of the highlights of that first half. Liam also coming in. Yeah, here you see Hilden rolling out. Well, that's a nice little short pass. That was the will deal. Again, that was what was working early on. Hilden was getting pressure by that St. Mary's defense, so they need to go to those quick throws. And then you see on the other side, Asante Carter using his athleticism and quickness. Fell just one yard short, but he would walk it in on the next play. As you see right there, had that huge hole. St. Mary's. Rolling to start, although Newman did get some momentum at the end. You see, that's been one of the big bugaboos, special teams for Newman. They've allowed two safeties on attempted punts inside the 20. Also had an extra point blocked. And there you see again, that's Caden Ward catching that touchdown pass. And then you see that last touchdown by Newman. Again, a great throw from Hilden. Kelly beating his man off the step. And getting Newman on the board and a big score. Get some momentum on their side. All right, we'll take another quick break right here and be back with more. High school sports are one of the things that make living in California so great. Athletics builds character, teamwork, physical fitness, 
and shows what hard work can achieve. And some of us can even earn a college scholarship or qualify for the Olympics. But sometimes the behavior in the stands can overshadow our achievements on the field. Hey California, this is Ron DeChetti, CIF Executive Director, and how we behave at games is a reflection of who we are. Let's turn the table on bad behavior and show friends, students, and our kids, and the other team, a side of ourselves that makes them truly proud. Hearing people cheer at our games really motivates me. But being booed for missing a play can be crushing. We're all on this team because we love you. Winning is amazing, but it's not the only thing. I love it when my parents show up for me. But hearing them yell at the coach is embarrassing. Oh, come on! And remember that refs are people too. They're trying their best to call a fair and correct game. Even if you may not love the call. I hear all the time all the crazy things the parents say. It's just like more frustrating than anything. The parents on my team were acting out. Because of this, they got kicked out of the game. And not only did the ref didn't change the answer, it just caused embarrassment for our whole team. The ref asked every parent on our sideline to, you know, exit the facility and waited till every parent did. So that wasted, you know, 10 to 15 minutes of our half. You're trying your best and you're putting yourself out there and you're on the court doing what you love and seeing and hearing people, you know, belligerently be mean to you, it's really frustrating. It makes you not want to play anymore. It makes you just want to go sit on the sidelines and cry. Like, it's not fun. So it does feel like the parents pick it about themselves instead of the players who are actually playing the game. Parents who lose their minds when we don't score aren't helping. What are you doing out there? It can actually be super distracting. We should be able to hold our heads high after the match, win or lose. No one should feel insulted or ashamed because of their race, ethnicity, or gender. Hey, and enough with all the swearing. Our games are the highlight of my week. Anger has no place here. Sportsmanship is simple. It means treating other students, fans, and opponents as you'd like your school's players to be treated. It also means showing respect to our game officials. Without them, our student athletes don't get to play the sport they love. Only then are we worthy of the title, CIF student athletes, families, and coaches. So let's get back to doing what we do best, California. Great competition and the best fans in the country. Thank you for being part of the change, and thank you for being there to lift us up. Thank you for that message from the CIF. Here at the half, it is 19-6, St. Mary's over Cardinal Newman. And now it's time to take a look at the team totals from that first half of play. St. Mary's doing a nice job both on the ground and, and in the air. Newman really couldn't get their ground game going at all. Yeah, and that's where the physicality and athleticism is on St. Mary's side. Going to Asante Carter and really going to that short side of the field a lot of the time. And they've mostly been on that left side using that offensive line. And, again, talked about the penalties as well. Really, see St. Mary's there, 6 for 35 yards, although they hold the 19-6 to lead. But without some of those penalties, they cut that in half. They may be up another score or two. Well, if you're from Newman's side, you say, we missed a field goal. We, could e we missed an extra point in a field goal. We could be sitting at 10. We gave them four points. So this could be a much closer game. Now, who's to say on those punts, St. Mary's might have put drives together and scored anyways. But... Yeah, it's, it, I think it's a little closer game than the score would indicate here at the half. Newman has just got to get a little bit more consistent on the ground and be able to chew up the clock like they did on that opening drive. That was perfect. They, they used clock. They drove down the field. They just missed the field goal. Yeah, and, and we've seen some flashes in the air. You see 88 passing yards, those two big plays to Kelly that ended up getting them on the board. When Hilden's had time to throw, they've been very successful. The problem is that St. Mary's has had a very quick defensive line. They sent five or six guys almost every time. They've gotten to Hilden. They've overwhelmed that Cardinal Newman offensive line. So I'm curious to see what the adjustment is going to be for Newman on the offensive side of things, particularly with that offensive line, see how they can stop the St. Mary's defense. SoCo Property has proudly supports Cardinal Newman. Caroline Fuller, the founding broker, has been enthusiastically serving Sonoma County's real estate needs and exceeding expectations for the past 18 years. A true local, Caroline grew up in Santa Rosa's Bennett Valley and now has an office in the Annadale Shopping Center Business Park. Design to sell is her specialty. Her team takes pride in preparing tired homes and revamping them from top to bottom to be the best homes on the block that sell for top dollar. No project is too big or small for this dynamic team. SoCo Property has grown organically thanks to their passion for sharing 
Sonoma, all Sonoma County has to offer with newcomers and locals by finding their clients the perfect property match. Caroline also dabbles in development, focusing on multifamily housing projects and teaming up with architects. You can't go wrong with Caroline Fuller & Associates, the key to the best move you'll make. SoCoProperty.com. Teams making their way back out to the field. We'll step aside one more time and we'll be back with the kickoff of the second half in just a moment. Santa Rosa Golf and Country Club is Sonoma County's premier private country club with something for everyone in the family. Of course, the incredible 18-hole golf course, including the exclusive 100-yard practice hole and driving range. The perfect dining experience from a casual lunch to an elegant formal dinner and the amazing event venue you will love. Santa Rosa Golf and Country Club can accommodate weddings and private events for up to 300 guests. And there is so much more to offer. Come see for yourself the Santa Rosa Golf and Country Food trucks tonight going strong. Got to love those food trucks. Hmm. Got them. I hope they have something left over for us after the game. Yeah, you say, I'll, I'll take that. It's a nice Friday night. Good weather, 73 degrees still. Here in Santa Rosa, good crowd. High school football really getting into full swing now. And so it's such a great time of, uh, of year high school football season. And now we get to league play next week. And both the uh, NBL Oak and Redwood should be very interesting along with the Vine Valley. It's going to be a huge drive to start the second half for both teams. St. Mary's can get the momentum back that they lost at the end of that quarter for Cardinal Newman. If they can get a stop, get their offense back on the field, they can start to feel like they might be able to come back in this game. Absolutely, and for Cardinal Newman, they got a little bit of that momentum right before the half ended. They scored that touchdown, and they drew St. Mary's back a few yards and really forced them on fourth down to run out the rest of that clock. So I think if you're Cardinal Newman, you got to feel pretty good about things after what was really a very lackluster first 18 minutes or so. Yeah, no question about that. Cardinal Newman has an open house coming up. Cardinal Newman is hosting its annual open house for parents on Sunday, October 13th. Parents of 8th graders spend the day at Cardinal Newman with student ambassadors to see what it's like to be a Cardinal Newman student. Space is limited, so register today. Go to cardinalnewman.org slash apply now. cardinalnewman.org slash apply now. Follow the steps to register for open house. And... In terms of applying, Cardinal Newman is now accepting applications for next year's freshman class. If you're an eighth grader interested in Cardinal Newman, visit the website and start the application process now. There are several steps, so start now and get your application in order before the wait list starts. Go to cardinalnewman.org slash apply now. Complete the form, follow the steps, and we'll be welcoming you to campus next year. We got a little excited when we saw Santino Azevedo warming up. Not sure if that was just to kind of uh, get him back out on the field, maybe get his teammates you know, a little comfortable with him being out there. He's been out for the last three weeks. So they really hope to get him back, I think, after the bye week. But realistically, it might be a little bit longer than that. Both ankles injured in that back of ill game that Cardinal Newman lost. St. Mary's has had... A real good start to their season. They beat West, Tracy, which is actually a league game. Kind of weird that they started league games back in August. They won that one 58-0. Then Central Catholic 47-7. St. Ignatius 49-20. That's a darn good team in the West Catholic Athletic League. And then Bishop O'Dowd 55-7. Yeah, St. Mary's right up there with Manteca in Division II of the Sac Joaquin section. And... Again, ranked 39th in the state of California. Definitely a team to be reckoned with in their league and down the road once we get into the postseason. Go to the YSN365.com scoreboard. Petaluma up 7-6 at the half over Justin Siena. Tamil Pius leads San Rafael 8-0. That's at the half. Vintage 20, Casa Grande 13 also at the half. Carrillo 18, Santa Rosa 6. That's still in the second quarter. Kennedy 22-0 over Hillsburg. And American Canyon 14-0 over Sonoma. Sonoma off to a good start this year. I think, what are they, 3-1? and one? Yeah. Start their season. It's been a while since 
And that's happened. I'm curious to see how they compete in that league. And American Canyon, usually one of the top dogs in that league, along with Vintage. And I know the defending champion, Casa Grande, hanging tough with them so far. Ready for the second half of play. Newman will kick it off. Patrick Gardner. A couple of punts that went awry. Dangerous return man dropping back. Gardner squibs it. Picked up by Kenneth Moore, the third. And he tries to find a little running room in the middle, but Newman does a pretty good job of taking him down near the 30-yard line. And a smart decision there by Newman, that squib kick. Moore got a good bounce, caught it cleanly, but wasn't able to get very far. This might be their worst starting field position of the night for St. Mary's, and we've seen them struggle on offense a little bit their last few possessions, so let's see if Newman can keep the momentum on their side here. Again, short side. Not much there as the Newman defense does a nice job about the 32-yard line. Asante Carter, the carrier there. Running a, a lot to that short side, as I've mentioned all night, and outside the tackles as well, using their speed. And it's worked for him so far. 14 rushes, 83 yards for Asante Carter. Picked up two on that one. Hunking to throw. Fire it. He's got a man, but it's overthrown and incomplete. Pass was intended for Brooks Wheatley, the senior. Couldn't get it. So third and long here. Nice opportunity for the Cardinals. Let's see if they can get a stop here. Dave Cox and Michael Barabal bringing you the action tonight from Ed Lloyd Field. Here in Santa Rosa, beautiful night for high school football. I'm going to throw again. Wide open. Man is open, way behind the first down marker. Steverson can't bring him down, but a bunch of others do. Jack Graff and company in on the tackle. Nice coverage by Newman. Steverson slowed him up. And see, Umgen had all the time to throw, but had more wide open and took a couple steps back trying to get around Stiverson there. But that backfired on him. Jasper Kemp also in on that tackle. Fourth down. And now St. Mary's going to punt for the first time tonight. Nice kick. Ayer, who's a great return man, will oh, take wow. this on a couple bounces. Ayer makes the first guy miss. The 35-yard line and a penalty marker down. And bunch of penalty markers down. And I think that this is going to be brought back a few yards. I think the referees are going to get Newman for a block in the back, specifically number 64, Logan Rodriguez, near the 45-yard line. Ruben Candelario, our referee, will make the call. He has been extremely busy. Oh. I have two fouls on the penalty on this play. Block in the back against Red on the return. That one's declined. This block in the back by Red on the return will be enforced 10 yards from the spot of the foul. It'll be first down for Saint, uh, for Cardinal Newman. Yeah, they were going to get decent field position there and a little momentum, but they'll get backed up. And they got two blocks in the backs there. I didn't see the second one. Danger zone, having a good time at the blackout tonight. But a big stop for Newman defensively. Get that offense back on the field. You give Steverson a chance. You get Hilden a chance. Zach Kelly. See if they can get him the ball. They put him out on the white side of the field. They got Kelly matched up with Watkins. Watkins playing way off Kelly. First down, Newman. Hilden, nice little oh. screen, and it goes right through Steverson's hands. And I'll tell you what, they had that set up nice. Yeah, and that was, they had yards for days had that been executed, but 
And I think that pass was a little bit behind Steverson. He overran it. Excellently set up. See it right here. And the line does a great job. And, yeah, Steverson just overran it. Started running, and then he realized he didn't have the ball. Here comes Steverson. Gets a nice block, and look out, Steverson down the sideline. To the 20, down inside the 15-yard line. What a block by Devin Bertoli as he opens him up for huge yardage. And I mean, Bertoli blew up his man on the outside corner. Check it out. That was a good old-fashioned pancake right there. He's going to pour some syrup on that one. What a block. And Steverson down the sideline. Wow, one, one of the better blocks I've seen in a while. For Tolley, the right guard for Newman. 12 rushes, 97 yards now for Steverson. Hilden looking over the defense now. First and goal from the nine-yard line. Low snap, Steverson left side. And the Rams are there this time. Let's check out that block again. That was just a thing of beauty. Check it out, number 58, right side of your screen. Right there. And he just kept moving his feet and broke him down. And just a little bit of a switch. The tackle went down. Bartoli pulled to the outside, picked up that end, and then put him down. Next play got blown up a little bit, however. Five wide this time for Newman. Empty backfield. Hilden to throw. Sets up that screen again, and it's batted down. And Dylan Lozano did a nice job reading that one. One of the hardest things to do, a little bit easier for the secondary, but to read that screen pass coming. And he was step in step with Steverson. Third and goal from about the 13 yard line. Field goal makes it a 10 point game, but I gotta believe Newman would be very disappointed if they don't get six points out of this drive. And they haven't targeted Zach Kelly at all. Now they have him isolated on the far side of the field. You wonder if they try and go to him right here. Kelly at the top of your screen, third and goal from the 13-yard line. There it they is. They are looking his way. A little bit of a bump. There's a the pass flag. is incomplete, but a marker comes down. <laughs> Definitely was some contact yeah. there. A little bit of a tug. Now when the throw's that close, that's going to get called every time. Left side of the screen. It's like a quick hitter that time. Just a two-step drop. Yeah, a little bit of a hold on that, that right shoulder. interference against the defense. That'll be half the distance to the goal. Repeat, third down. A little bit of a break for Newman. Repeat, if it was defensive holding, if it was defensive holding, that would have been an automatic first down, but... They pick up, they'll end up picking up about six and a half, seven yards out of that. They will spot it right at the six yard line. So third and goal still. Big drive for Newman. We'll see if they can get six out of this. Swing it out. Nice play. Steverson all alone. Touchdown. Cardinal Newman. Kaize Steverson. And you said it. Just a simple swing pass to the outside. And Newman marches down the field. And they have all the momentum right now. And they're going to try and go for twos. You see it from Hilden here. Great call. Three-step drop. No one was on him. Steverson having a big night. I see Newman fought yeah. within five here. Easy money right there. Newman going for two. 
They trail by seven right now. Two backs behind Hilden. St. Mary's packing the box. Play action. Throws oh. it high, and the man was wide open. It was Zach Rea it was at a fullback spot. I don't know if I go for two right there. If I get one, then a touchdown and an extra point gives you the lead. Yeah, I think just trying to get back to that even number and set yourself up later in the game. But if you're Newman, you take the six, and now you pulled yourself to within seven, and you're right back in this ballgame. Tonight's game is sponsored by Corrective Exercise and Restoration. They specialize in holistic health care, getting athletes back on the field. They also do team trainings. They are the team trainers here at Newman. Take your athlete to Corrective Exercise and Restoration and get them back on the field quickly. Two locations to serve you, one in Sebastopol and one in Santa Rosa. Corrective Exercise and Restoration. They are the best in the business, there's our vantage point from the press box. Hanging out with Paolo, our director tonight, and Hugo, our statistician extraordinaire. You guys are doing a great job. Let's keep it rolling. Cheerleaders making some noise. Nice to see them out tonight. And we've got a good one here, 19-12. Another big opportunity for Newman here if they can hold again. Squib kick. Taken by Brooks Wheatley. Wheatley tries to come to the near side. Holding right yep. there. It was obvious. They're going to get Caden Ward. Ward. Yeah, he was holding uh, Kenyon. Yeah, and St. Mary's shooting themselves in the foot. Yeah, penalties have been problematic for the Rams. On the return, white team, hold. Be 10 yards from the spot of the foul. First down, St. Mary's. I think, you, I think you'll be able to see it pretty clearly right here. You see right number there. 14 on number yep. 11. Where's our telestrator? <laughs> <laughs> Saw that jersey being tugged, and you go outside the shoulders there. It's going to get called every time. That ball back, that backs the ball up to the 22-yard line. For St. Mary's. And the, this is the worst field position, starting field position St. Mary's has had all night. So here we go, first and 10 from the 22. Hunking to throw, a little high, almost tip. Oh, and look man. out, off to the races in the Sari Danielson. Danielson with three guys chasing, and they do catch up to him finally, but way, way, way downfield. Wow, that pass was almost tipped too, it was very close. Here it is in the air, and he got it. And that broken tackle right there was just a killer. Yeah, and got past a defender there and a big play right back. St. Mary's responds. And they're going to try and make this a two-score game once again. This Terry Danielson, great player. Newman may have 12 guys on the field here. Got a flag. Yep. Here comes Asante Carter near the goal line, taken down at the one, but a couple markers down. Asante Carter with the run. Brought down by Air as well as Kelly. Flag on the play. Here comes Ruben again. There is no penalty on the flag. Second down. Waved it off. Interesting. Second and goal. Got the jumbo package coming in for St. Mary's. They're going to run that same play. Looks like for Carter. Carter again. And that's a touchdown. Carter in for the touchdown. Sante Carter gets in for the score. And that was big. That was a big drive right there. It didn't take, only took him three plays. Sixteen rushes and 88 yards now for Asante Carter and two touchdowns for St. Mary's as he 
Takes to the sideline. Kick is up and good. They made the kick. So it's 26 to 12. St. Mary's 26. Tonight's game is sponsored by Anchor 21 Promotional Branding. We are your one-stop shop for all your promotional branding needs. Go to anchor21branding.com. That is Anchor 21 Branding. Thank you to them. Well, that was too bad. Newman got to back, back to within one score, and then three plays later, now they're back down two scores. But they, they have proven that they can move the ball down the field. And just a couple of big plays on that drive for St. Mary's. Didn't take him very long. Newman, obviously now with the chance to respond, but now have started to show that they can move the ball in this St. Mary's defense. Nicholas Ayer hoping to get an opportunity here. And once again, they just low kick it right past everybody. Line drive it. No return. Newman has had no return yards tonight at all. There's Matthew Hilden getting ready to take the field now. See if he can engineer another drive. So here we go. Newman with the ball back now. 7.29 to go, third quarter here at Ed Lloyd Field. And Hilden to throw. Finds a man over the middle. And they pick up one or two yards. That's it, Steverson. It was the same play that they tried earlier in the half that he missed. That time the defense was there and set up much better. Mm -hmm. And again, these kind of these quick hitters for Newman. Offensive line has picked it up a little bit in terms of giving Hilden time to throw, but you know that St. Mary's defense is, is coming with five or six guys almost every play. 26 to 12. Newman down by 14. Holman goes in motion. Hilden to throw. He's going to fire it deep looking for Zach Kelly. Kelly comes back to the ball and it's tipped. Nice defensive play. Joshua Watkins who just barely got a finger on that one. And he, that time he stayed with Kelly. Didn't let him get behind him and made a nice play. Here it is. Just did get the hand in there. And stayed in front of him. And nice shot by Watkins. He's been burned a couple times by Kelly, but not that time. Third down. Over the middle, complete, not going to be enough yardage. Catching that one was Zach Homan. It's going to be fourth down. Newman's going to have to punt this one away. And just when we thought Newman had the momentum, St. Mary's grabs it right back. Oh High my snap gosh. again. Unbelievable. That's going to be a third safety, maybe. Gardner, I don't know if that was a good move. He tries to kick it. He might have been rough, though. Yeah, I don't know how you score that. Wow. He didn't even kick it out of the end zone. That's the thing. No, he didn't. 
We're going to have to sort this mess out. Here it is. Didn't step yeah. out of the back of the end zone. He's going to get roughed, but I don't think. But if you're St. Mary's, you're arguing that he's trying to run the ball there. I don't know. And punt it at the last minute. Of we'll course, let, we'll let Ruben have this one. This will be interesting. I got a personal foul, roughing the kicker. That's a white team. That's a 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down from the wow. previous spot. Wow, what a break for Newman. I'm him. I'm giving up on punting tonight. That's the last time I try to punt. Might as well. I mean, you're talking three bad snaps. Two of them have gone for safeties and very nearly allowed a third safety, safety right there. But they get a huge break, and they get the ball at their own 40-yard line. Here that that could, is again. I, he didn't touch it. Didn't touch the ball. Yeah. But I think you're right. He almost stepped out of the back of the end zone before he kicked it. And I think whoever was back there, he was kind of caught in in between. Was he going to tackle him, block him? Well, yeah. yeah. But you have to, if you're going to hit the kicker, you got to get the ball, and he didn't get the ball. Go, One thing go, Gardner go. did right. At first I was saying, do not try to kick this. I mean, I'm not sure how much you fault St. Mary's right there. That's a very tough spot, and Tony Frank's on the far side. Pleading his case to Ruben. Oh, yeah. Let's see if we can get that for you. Let's go. I see Ruben running back in there now. Oh, looks like they're going to conference now. Yeah, well, he apparently he made a pretty good point. Yeah, again, this was a very interesting play. And I think Tony Franks played his case like, hey, he didn't know he was, if he was going to punt it or if he was going to run. And my guy was caught in between. But those type of plays are to the official's judgment. There's no written rule in the rule book. See Frank's there in the white visor. Franks was talking to the head official and the side judge. Here's Ruben. After consulting with my crew, the call on the field stands. It's personal foul. Roughing the kicker. Automatic first down. All right. That's one of those situations where maybe someday in the future they might have a monitor down the field and be able to refer to our replays. Yeah. Every other level of play does that. Kaize mm -hmm. Steverson. Mm -hmm. Nothing doing there. He gets about a yard, and that is it. Second down. Steverson on the carry. Looks like we got another flag on the far side. I think this one might be against Newman. There. Holding. Against the offense. Repeat the down. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Okay. And officiating crew is going to earn their money tonight. Randy. Okay. Yeah, that hurt. Referees giveth, referees taketh away. <laughs> Some would say makeup call, but they don't do that, right? There's no <laughs> such thing as makeup call. Oh, and we got another flag. We're going to get a, a late hit against Amari Hall. After that pass went incomplete. 
Both teams are trading penalties here. See what this one's about. Incomplete pass. That's a personal foul on a, on a defenseless player. Repeat count. Here. We saw penalties play a factor in the YSN game of the week last week at Montgomery against Casa Grande. And again, penalties taking over, especially in this third quarter. Wow. From first and 10 to first and 22, now it's first <laughs> and seven for Newman. Roundabout way to get to this, but here we are. Hilden. Out of the on, pistol, flips oh it to Steverson, he throws it behind him. Steverson's going to cover it, but man, they lost a lot of yardage there. It's almost like another penalty. We're back to where they started after the holding, first and 20. See right there, just going to be a bad pitch. Yeah, right behind him. They were lucky to get that back. Perhaps, yeah. St. Mary's grabs that. That's a scoop and score. Pass is caught. Zach Kelly spinning, diving close to a first down near midfield. How about that? I think they actually might have gotten that one. And yeah, they're going to bring the chains. And it's funny, you saw Steverson there looking for someone to block, but it was Kelly making those guys miss. You see Steverson, he's trying to block someone, but Kelly's doing the work for him. Got some extra yardage there, and that got Newman the first down. Three receptions and 74 yards now for Zach Kelly's Cardinal Newman. Somehow, after all that, manages to get a first down. I'm not sure how. That was crazy. Hilden has some time. Now it collapses on him, and he's sacked back at the 47. A couple big guys right there. That time, Ryan Camello. In on that sack, second down. Santos was also there. Danielson, of course. Danielson's there just about every time. Training staff working on Jamari. Second and 12. Hilden in trouble, and down he goes. He wanted to get it to Stefferson, but couldn't do it. Lucas Healy with the sack. Nice defensive play. And Hilden's coming off the field limping. It's like he might stay in, but he is definitely shaken up. Here he is just kind of running for his life here. And they took the big fellow down. I tell you what, not easy to do. Yeah, that's a great play by Healy. Backup quarterback is Wyatt Konechly. He's a sophomore. Looks like Hilden will stay in, but he can, has an invisible limp jog back to the huddle. Konechly has taken a few snaps this year. And that same area's defensive line causing havoc. Two minutes to go here in the third quarter. Set this up nicely to Homan. Makes the first guy miss. Spins. Danielson can't bring him down. And Homan gets back almost all the way to the original line of scrimmage. Wow, nice play. 
Right, St. Mary's having a tough time taking down some of these Newman skill players. See, he makes one guy missing. Was nearly dead in the water here and got through it. Got some extra yardage. And Newman, fourth down, going for it, obviously. And they try to draw St. Mary's offside. It looked like there was a little jump there, but they didn't cross the line. Of course, Leary of punting. They've had three bad snaps. Hilden looking. Looks, looks like they had alignment to you on the other side of the ball, but it was never snapped. I think they're going to take a timeout. Coach Sanchez is standing right next to the line judge, and indeed they do take a timeout. Want to remind you that now is the time to apply for Cardinal Newman. They also have a Father Sunday promo coming up. Father Sunday at Cardinal Newman is set for October 2nd. This perennial event is a great time for fathers and sons. They compete in sack races, tug of war, and other games and enjoy lunch together. Just the fellas. Register online at cardinalnewman.org. Select support and then events. Mass at 10 a.m., games and lunch. Father Sunday at Cardinal Newman. Some other updates. Petaluma. 14-6 now in the fourth quarter over Justin Siena. American Canyon 50-7 over Sonoma. And Tamil Pius 8-0 over San Rafael. Vintage 34, Casa Grande 13. Kennedy 28, Hillsburg 0. What happened to the Santa Rosa score? Not there anymore. Not sure what happened to that one. YSN365.com scoreboard. Now Newman will punt. This has been an adventure. Had trouble with these snaps. Low, but he handles it, and he does get off a kick. Um, Not much of a roll there as Saint, it trickles to the 35. Yeah, got a St. Mary's bounce that time. And the first time they've gotten a punt off all night. Now St. Mary's in a position to put this game not away but put themselves in a very good position to go up three scores yeah this could be trouble pass to the far side complete Brooks Wheatley to the 35 yard line nice first down play Good yardage. You know, Whaley using his speed. Got behind two Newman defensive backs. And I think if he had not turned inside, he would have been off to the races and gotten a whole lot more yardage. But I'm sure they'll take the big play right there. Nice defensive play getting there. Making the sack, James McKenzie. Nice play. And McKenzie did a nice job blowing that play up. Getting through that line. Pass to the near side. Wheatley has it again. Wheatley down to the 20, and a marker down. They might get Ward again for holding. He's thrown at around the 31-yard line. That's where Ward's standing. See it on the, saw it on your screen there. Here's Ruben. Against the offense, be 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Repeat second down. Marys again. 
another penalty pushing them back. Yeah, penalties has really hurt St. Mary's tonight. Second and a bunch for the Rams, leading 26 to 12 as the third quarter ticks down. Hulken to throw, incomplete. And a nice job off the edge by Jesse Myers for Newman and Zach Rea delivering the hit after the throw that time. And a big play coming up for Newman defensively. Third and long, got to get a stop here. Yeah, any chance at a comeback, and you have to stop the Rams right here. Trailing by two scores late in the third quarter. Third and a bunch. 17 to be exact. And Newman jumps. It's going to be third and 12. Jesse Myers, he was he was digging in. He knew he was going to get a chance Dead for ball a sack foul. right there. Encroachment against the defense. Five-yard penalty, third down. Still third and 12, though. Yeah, still third and long, and... Again, you still have to get a stop. And Myers having a discussion with Coach Sanchez. Meanwhile, St. Mary's is about to run the play. Dwelling on that penalty. Yeah, Myers is their leading sack getter with four coming into this game. They're coming after Hulkin here. Myers is chasing him, but Hulkin gets away. And he dies. Did he get the first down? My goodness. I don't know. I think they're going to mark him maybe a, an inch short. He was darn close, though. That just cannot happen if you're Newman. Myers was trying to get him from behind. Then he kind of goes low here, and he dives. Man. Fourth and inches. And they're going to bring out that jumbo package, and it's the end of the quarter. Third quarter comes to an end. It was kind of a crazy one for sure. We'll step aside ourselves and get ready for the final 12 minutes of this one. Good ball game. The Cardinals battling tooth and nail with the St. Mary's Rams 26 to 12 as we head to the final quarter of play. High school sports are one of the things that make living in California so great. But sometimes the behavior in the stands can overshadow our achievements on the field. I love it when my parents show up for me. But being booed for missing a play could be crushing. And remember that refs are people too. They're trying their best to call a fair and correct game. Hey, and enough with all the swearing. No one should feel insulted or ashamed because of their race, ethnicity, or gender. We should be able to hold our heads high after the match, win or lose. Here we go, start of the fourth quarter. Jumbo package, and they get the first down rather easily. And that play has worked all night for St. Mary's when they've been inside the three yard line. They've ran that play twice, once for a touchdown, once for a two-point conversion. They run out fourth and short there, and here we go again. Sticking with the jumbo package, Sante Carter breaks through the line, dancing toward the end zone, and he's in. Touchdown. St. Mary's scores on the second play of the fourth quarter. Sante Carter, just a little toss play, and he rams it in. Yeah, again, that right side of the offensive line pushing down, and that gives Carter plenty of room. <laughs> Newman hasn't been able to stop that play all night. Extra point, no good. Hits the cross. Tonight's game is sponsored by NBE North Bay Elite, the North Bay's premier 
Girls Basketball Club, and it's the longest-running club in Sonoma County. Players going on to compete at the Division I, II, III, and NAIA levels. North Bay Elite Girls Basketball. Still time left for Newman, but a couple of big plays there for St. Mary's after Newman pulled it within one score. It's made a big difference. Nicholas here dropping back again. They haven't given him a chance. Maybe this time. He does get it at the five-yard line. Air quickly out to the 15. Makes the first guy miss. Gets through the 20 and out to the 26-yard line. Nicholas Air. Nice job by Nicholas Air. First down, Kaize Steverson. Not much there. He's had that one big run, but that's really been about it tonight as far as the running game goes for Newman. And, again, it's that St. Mary's defensive line, that front seven, has done an excellent job shooting the gaps, shaving off blockers, and has used their speed to their advantage. Quick pass, a little bit low. It was intended for William Beal. He's caught a couple balls tonight, but that one was just off target. Yeah. That's a catch that's got to be made if you're Cardinal Newman. Got plenty of space. Just a low throw and a little bit to the left of the receiver that time. Here comes Hilden now. Throwing deep. Oh. Zach Kelly has it. Nice play. Zach Kelly with another catch. Yeah, that's that time it was Amari Hall on Kelly. And Kelly beats him. He's beaten Watkins. He's beaten Charlotte. And now he beats Amari Hall. Again, another great throw from Hilden and Kelly. Saw it in the entire way. Four receptions, 98 yards now for Zach Kelly. First down, Newman. Hilled into scramble, and he gets a couple. Football came out late. St. Mary's thinks they've yeah, got it. I think they're going to say he was down. Officials do not agree with that. Been sacked a bunch, seven carries, negative 28 yards, but the sacks have kind of racked up on the big junior quarterback. He could be a real weapon if he could run the ball a little bit. I think, and that pass, he's hit right as he throws. Big pressure that time. Yeah, that's that same area's front seven for you, Evan Jackson. 
Yeah, got they were coming that time. Got to Hilden about a couple seconds. You see he was right there. And Hilden, trying to avoid the sack, just has to throw it and hope somebody was there. And, of course, Newman, you are in four-down territory. 32-12. to 12. Newman down by three scores, 9.33 to go. They were in this game. It was 19-12 to 12 late in the third quarter. Here's Zach Kelly. Nice inside screen. And Kelly has a first down at the 35-yard line. Well done. Setting up that little screen. It's been a good play for them tonight. And that will be enough for a new first down. Yeah, Kelly just kind of stops right in the middle there, gets behind those blockers. And just a couple steps up and then plants with his left foot, goes to the right. Gets Newman a first down. Hilton flips it out. Kaize Steverson. Good sure tackle in the open field that time by Catrale Hart. Nice play. And that's something that St. Mary's has struggled with at times. Newman has shed off a lot of tackles, but Hart able to wrap up that time. St. Mary's, you're playing Cardinal Newman and you're playing the clock right now. Clock ticking down under 8.30 now in this fourth quarter. Second down, eight yards to go. Hilden throws it high and incomplete. Hit as he throws, unfortunately. Hilden's fast and Tim Kelly goes incomplete. Third and seven, manageable here for Newman. Hilden looking over that defense now. Steverson will settle into a slot right. Empty backfield with Matthew Hilden. Blitz is on. Tries to get rid of it quickly. I think they're. I think they were trying to go for a screen pass again, and he threw it to Kelly, but they had there was no room there. Yeah, Dylan Lozano there for St. Mary's, as well as Ryan Camello. Fourth down now. Man, this is almost do or die for Newman right now. Fourth and eight. Any chance at a comeback rests on this play right here for Newman. Swing it out to Steverson. He's got it. Open field. Close to a first down. He spins and he's got it. Big play. And I was almost going to say, why wasn't Zach Kelly on the field? But it works out for Newman. Steverson has had a huge game for the Cardinal and Gold. Let's see a little fake shovel there. That's that screen to Kelly a few plays back. Then Newman. Gotta have a little bit more urgency though. First and ten, low throw. Not much there, maybe a yard. Here's that first down play again. And just those short passes and Steverson making Rams miss and forcing Lozano to tackle him a few extra yards more than he wanted and that ended up getting him the first down. Carried his momentum. Oh, 
Homan has it down near the 15-yard line. He's going to be just a couple yards short of the first down, but Zach Homan making the play right there. And again, if I'm Newman, you've wasted a minute in between these last two plays. Down by three scores. I almost think you have to start going no huddle here. Third and two. Other than that, you're going to have to start scoring and either recover an onside kick or force a turnover. Newman at the 15-yard line. Homan may be changing the play here at the line of scrimmage. Single back is Steverson. They'll try the run. Steverson close to the 10-yard line. I think he's got the first yeah, down. Yeah, they're going to bring the chain crew. Nice blocking there on that right side. Zach Kelly not on the field. It doesn't look like he's hurt. He's standing on the sideline near the coaches. 16 rushes, 97 yards for Kaize Steverson. He's also oh! caught five balls out of the backfield, so he's been a very big workhorse here tonight for Coach Richard Sanchez. 5.40 to go. They'll swing it to him out of the backfield. Can't hang on. That one was actually, you know, that's Steverson. Matthew Hilden. And Kelly back on the field, and they have him isolated on the far side. See him on the top of your screen. Looks like St. Mary's will take a timeout. St. Mary's will stop the clock momentarily. SoCo Property proudly supports Cardinal Newman. Caroline Fuller, the founding broker, has been enthusiastically serving Sonoma County's real estate needs and exceeding expectations for the past 18 years. A true local, Caroline grew up in Santa Rosa's Bennett Valley and now has an office in Annadale Shopping Center Business Park. Designed to sell is her specialty. Her team takes pride in preparing tired homes and revamping them from top to bottom. To be the best homes on the block that sell for top dollar. No project is too big or small for this dynamic team. So Co Property has grown organically thanks to their passion for sharing all Sonoma County has to offer with newcomers and locals finding their clients the perfect property match. Caroline also dabbles in development, focusing on multifamily housing projects and teaming up with architects. You can't go wrong with Caroline Fuller & Associates, the key to the best move you'll make. So Co Property. Newman with a second and 10 from the 11-yard line. Hilden has some time, has a man back in the end zone just over the head of Zach Kelly. So close. We've seen some inaccurate throws at times from Hilden. You see, you're going to see here Kelly gets open. The throw a bit high. He threw running to his right, and you see that ball sail. Kelly just 5'11", not able to get up there and grab that ball. One thing Newman doesn't have is one of those big, tall guys that they can spot up. Adon kind of is that as the tight end, but he's out of the game with an injury. Hilden throws that, complete touchdown. Wow. Zach Coleman has it. The Cardinals get on the board here late. Nice throw there by Hilden, and a nice job by Holman to make the catch. And perfect throw. Th threaded the needle with that one. Looks like Newman is going to go for two, and down by 14. Not really sure if I understand that. Yeah, they're going to go for two you, for sure. You kick the extra point, you go down 13. Still down two scores. I just think they've kind of lost faith in their 
special teams play. They've had three bad snaps, block kick. Hilden rolls out. Hilden has a guy, oh. and it's tipped to the line. If he had just lofted that over the defender, who was right in a good place, Catrale Hart. Yeah. That was so a, they'll settle, settle for six. That was a great play by Catrale Hart. Just got the hand up just in time. Holman was wide open, and like you mentioned, if he just floated it up there, that was going to be two points for Newman. You see the touchdown again. Yeah, great. put it in a perfect spot. Great throw that time, yeah. Now the question is, is Newman going to onside kick it here? Down two scores, 5.23 left with two timeouts. I think that's what they're discussing right now. Does look like they have their hands team on the field. Tonight's game is sponsored by Anchor 21 Promotional Branding. We are your one-stop shop for all your promotional branding needs. Go to www.anchor21branding.com and find out more. On side kick, it looks like here. Yep, St. Mary's is ready for it. Coming right at you, takes a hop. But St. Mary's is able to recover that easily at the 45 yard line, 521 left to go. Comeback hopes dwindling now for Newman. Not impossible. Vintage now 41-19 over Casa Grande. Marin Catholic 34. Antioch 11. American Canyon 57. Sonoma Valley 7. Tamil Pius 8. San Rafael 0. Those games are all late. Petaluma 21. Justin Siena 6. That's homecoming night down there in Trojan land. Rick Chris and the Trojans. 4-1. How about that? 1 0 in league play. I think they're getting ready to take on Vintage next week. Next week, our plans are to be at Casa Grande for the Casa Grande Ukiah game. So we're going to try to work that out for you. Hulk in trouble. Throws it low and incomplete. Throws incomplete. Sam Mary's doing Cardinal Newman a favor by stopping the clock. This game not over by any stretch. Sticking with Holkin at quarterback, soft, the freshman. Since this game is fairly close, not playing so much tonight. Here's a nice run. Weaving his way out to the 49-yard line. I believe that's his first carry of the night, Terrence Hampton. Second, actually, says Hugo. Yes, Hampton, the sophomore. 5'7", 140. Now a big third down coming up. For Newman, you got third and medium here, third and five. Yeah, that quick stop was, was kind of quick key, stopping the clock. Now if they can get St. Mary's to punt right here, that would be huge. Oh, he's got the first down. Knocked out of bounds, but he gets good yardage. First down, St. Mary's. And yet, Hampton, nice speed. Turned on the Jets once he got to the sideline and picked up the first down. And now all St. Mary's is going to want to do and just run this clock. Nice little corner turn there. Jets around the corner, gets the first down. 153 yards on the ground for St. Mary's. Their running game has been very effective tonight. Great balance tonight, 183 in the air. Here's Hampton again, and he gets to about the 33-yard line. Hampton is a sophomore, so they've got a lot of I mean, they've got players up and down their lineup. They've got great juniors and seniors, very young team, but they've even yeah. got a few freshmen that get – a lot of snaps. Danielson, one of their best defensive players, just a sophomore. I mean, Wheatley, really the only 
dominant offensive sophomore senior and on the other side of the ball Lucas Healy a senior but again like you said most of them underclassmen and same areas four minutes away from being five and oh they hadn't really been tested coming into this game their opponents but combined two and four team they really had a lot of blowouts Newman was right there third quarter down by seven unfortunately the very next drive got away from them St. Mary's driving here in the fourth quarter. And not much doing there as the Newman defense stops Hampton. And Newman gets the bye week. Then they head into NBL Oak Play, taking on Montgomery. And that, that league is going to be very intriguing to watch with Annaly back in there. And Annaly's looking like they're back to where they were. And they're back in the SCL with Dan Bordeaux back at the helm. And you got Rancho Katati, the cream of the crop, defending champs, Windsor. It's going to be a very competitive league. I'm looking forward to seeing how it pans out. Throws this one, and Newman picks it off. How about that? Cardinals come up with a turnover. Never say never. Nice play there by Jasper, Jasper Kemp. Kemp. Yeah. Let's check it out. It's tipped by Rodriguez right there. Yeah, and timed his leap perfectly. And nice shot by Kemp to come down with that and give Newman an opportunity here. 2.44 to go. Newman down by two scores. First and ten, Cardinals. Quick score and an onside kick. You never know. Hilden inside screen to Kelly. Spins away from one guy, but not the next two, and he gets to the 30-yard line. Newman's got to get up to the line now. You want to conserve those two timeouts as much as you can. Second and Seventh catch of the night for Zach Kelly for over 100 yards. He goes to the far side now. Guarded out there by Watkins, Joshua Watkins. Single back is Kaize Steverson. Uh, wasting a lot of time here. Hilden fires it deep for Kelly. Kelly's got it. What a catch. Oh, my goodness. Wow, over the top of the defense. And Kelly's down, unfortunately. What a heck of a play. He went up and got that football. There he is, yeah, he, right over Watkins. That was a great play, and now you hope he's okay. Yeah, Kelly seems to be shaken up. And he's got the wind knocked out of him, but... Heck of a play in the Newman fans. Loving and don't look now. Cardinal Newman and St. Mary's territory. It's a great throw. And Kelly's just so good at tracking the ball. Knows where his defender is. Hilden's 20 for 34 for 227 yards. By far his best percentage of the year, Zach Kelly comes off the field. That's a great shot right there on the sideline. Yeah, nice job by Decat running our sideline camera. You hope he, you hope he's able to get back into this game. Yeah, you do. Hilden throws that one complete. Nice little inside screen to Jonah Bertoli, and he has first down yardage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're going to stop the clock. Newman's got to keep going. And that little screen pass went to Bertoli. Didn't get out of bounds. So now the clock's running. 
Hilled in a little high intended for Bertoli again, and that does stop the clock with 1.22 to go. I wonder if there was a little bit of a miscommunication there between Bertoli and Hilden because it seemed like Hilden thought Bertoli was going to go back out. That's why you saw that throw was high, but he came back in. And it gives Newman a chance to catch their breath. Got to score at the uh, St. Mary's 28-yard line. Time definitely not on Newman's side here. 122 to play, fourth quarter. Down by two scores against St. Mary's of Stockton. Matthew Hilden looking over the defense with two to the near side. Looking far side, incomplete. Kaize Steverson can't handle that throw. It's been under duress all night long. And I think Aiden Woods, the right tackle for Newman, got away with a a bit of a hold. Oh, no, actually, I do see a flag now. And I think that's what they're going to get. They're going to get Woods for holding the right tackle. Holding against the offense. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat second down. That's obviously the last thing you want. Move it back to the 45 yard line. That's kind of a big blow. Still time, but they need a score and an onside kick. Make this a little more interesting. And good news is Zach Kelly back on the field. You see the wide receiver bunch right there. It looks like it's Steverson. Interesting play. Steverson takes it right up the middle of the 39. They had it stacked to that near side. And Newman, no urgency. Are they going to? I'm surprised there's no urgency here. You've gotten some big plays from Kelly and Steverson. You never know. You get one here, onside get kick, one recover. The, yeah, get one in the end zone here. I'm really surprised. Hilden back to pass. Fires it for Kelly a little bit high and incomplete. And now it's fourth down, 38 seconds to go. So thank you. I almost think Newman maybe goes, takes a shot at the end zone now. Fourth and 20 here. Fourth and 20. Hilden throws an inside screen to Nicholas Air. He won't get there. Not sure I quite understand the last few plays for Newman. I mean, you're in Rams territory. Down two scores, you're down 14. Still had about a minute and a half to play. Two timeouts. And almost it just seemed like they gave up in a sense. 22 for 39, 241 yards on the night. Matthew Hilden's night is over. Zach Kelly ends the night with eight receptions. And now St. Mary's will just simply take a knee here. 24 seconds to go. So just take one snap here. Yeah. And that should do it. And the clock is running. And the teams will head to the sidelines. St. Mary's not really threatened much, but a little bit. You know, they, they made them sweat, I think, you know, the opening drive for sure. And, and then in that third quarter, definitely. But this is a final. St. Mary's goes to 
five and zero on the year. Newman three and two. They will enter league play with that record. And I think for if you're Cardinal Newman, you're in a pretty good position. Three and two, and playing a very good St. Mary's team ranked in the top. 40 in the entire state of California across all divisions and sections. And Sackle Keen, Section Division 2, number two team in that section. So I think if you're Cardinal Newman, you've got to take the positives with it. You have your bye week, then you go into Montgomery in a couple weeks and look for a chance to win that North Bailey Go title, which they have a very good shot to do, and they've been battle tested. And it's going to be a very interesting league to watch. No question about that. St. Mary's goes to Lodi next week. Good luck to the Rams as they continue their season. That is going to do it for our coverage here tonight. We certainly hope that you have enjoyed it. Kind of an interesting ball game. And Newman gets close. Comes up just a little bit short. We'll see you next week with more Game of the Week action and then a couple weeks right back here at Cardinal Newman. Until then, for Michael Barabalt and all of us here at YSN365.com, I'm Dave Cox saying goodnight.